Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, everybody. It's a breezy, chilly morning here at Harass Farm, but it's still got that nagging northeasterly breeze. The uh, sun's just trying to break through the cloud, which has been with us for several days now. And it's a little bit chilly. I suppose it's about 16, 17 degrees centigrade. So um, it's a bit bracing, we would say, and the wind is blowing the hedge around in front of me here. Just about finished flowering. There's some hawthorn here. Just a little white flowers are just about finished. I've got a little camera in my hand this morning and you can just see them looking a bit pinkish now as the petals start to drop off. And behind me is Notre Dame wood uh, planted in 1990 by the children of Notre Dame School in Norwich. And uh, they're doing really well the trees. One or two have died with the heat from last summer. There's a Norway spruce there which is quite a shallow rooted tree and uh, that's completely dead and anyway I've been sent a really interesting question by one of our listeners and I'll just hold a little picture up that came with the question in front of the camera and it's from Jane Martin who lives just near Scarning and she says I was out on an early morning walk and I discovered this and I think it's a wasp's nest <laughs> and I must admit it does look like a very large cocoon the same shape that wasps would build if they were building out in a tree and there's a species of wasp which we don't see quite so much of at the moment it's the German wasp and they will often uh, build their paper-like structure in bushes and trees and uh, the nest gets larger and larger as summer progresses Anyway, it's not a wasp's nest, but what I can do is show you exactly what it is. Because along this hedge here, there's some hawthorn, which I already explained, some blackthorn. And there's another species which this particular moth likes to lay its eggs on. And the moth is called brown tail moth. Oh, <laughs> there's a, it does have a little brown tail and the rest of the moth is quite fluffy and white and lays its eggs on this particular plant and this one here is spindle uh, it's a british native plant and it's quite inconspicuous for most of the year the plant is uh, it has little flowers which are in flower at the moment very sort of demure almost green and not very spectacular and lots of new growth coming you can see my hand here uh, just looking at the feathery growth. It grows about a foot uh, a year in terms of that and it was heavily persecuted, spindle was, in the 1940s and 50s when farmers discovered it um, harboured a particular species of aphid over the winter months, Mysus persicae. That's the aphid that will introduce virus yellows into sugar beet. Anyway, Many got cut down back then, <laughs> and so it's, it became much scarcer out in the Norfolk countryside than what it was. Now, this moth, the brown tail moth, loves, absolutely loves spindle leaves. So the female moth, once she's mated, lays her eggs on the underside of the leaves, and they hatch out, and then the caterpillars do something amazing. They make their own cocoon. And as they grow each day, they spread the cocoon out until this whole bush in front of me will be absolutely a mass of webbing. And so I can get the camera in nice and close now, and we can actually have a look at some of the little caterpillars. And as we're watching, they're squiggling and wiggling away, and they are eating the leaves of this particular plant, the spindle. So as they come out of the little cocoon, they leave some threads behind them. And so eventually you'll have a very large uh, mass of webbing, which I'm just going to open it up a little bit, clear the foliage, and you can have a real good close look at 
hundreds and hundreds of these little caterpillars. And it's best not to touch them because they are absolutely covered in little hairs. And if those hairs get on your skin, they are quite irritating. But nevertheless, it's a top food on cold days like this for our blue tits, great tits, long tail tits, absolutely feast on. Once they find a cocoon like this, they'll peck a little hole into the side and fly off with a juicy caterpillar, which is top-notch food for the youngsters. So there we are. It's the brown tail moth. Although it's white and furry, main part of the body of the moth, it holds the tip of its abdomen downwards and it's kind of chocolate brown. Now, if the female or the male moth gets a little bit upset and disturbed, the brown tail will come up at the tip of the abdomen. This little brown bushy appearance happens and that's why it's called the brown tail moth. But it's quite an attractive moth. It's about 40 millimetres meters wingspan so say an inch and a half in old money to give you an idea of the size of the moth so as you travel around the Norfolk countryside in a week or so's time as we get towards mid-June and getting towards then you'll see some bushes out in the Norfolk countryside particularly blackthorn particularly hawthorn absolutely leafless and covered in this sort of cobwebbing style <laughs> structures all over the bushes and this bush won't have a leaf on I can promise you in about 10 days time the caterpillars devour the whole lot then miraculously they pupate down onto the ground and the bush will then carry on its normal growing cycle obviously stunted just temporarily um, but there we are so the brown tail moth Thank you very much, Jane, for such a superb picture. So not moths crawling about inside that cocoon, wasps crawling about inside that cocoon. It was the brown tail moth. So there we are, the caterpillars from them. Top-notch food for all our native birds at this time. Yeah, particularly on cold mornings like this. Just here's the trees planted by those children, a beautiful field maple. Uh, a Scots pine in the background and then lots of oak as well all scattered through this hectare of woodland several hundred trees a real tribute to the children of Notre Dame school well done all that time back 1990 a lot of them are grown up they're not children anymore but well done and I can hear my pesky terrier rat don't know where he is he's nearby somewhere he came walking in there and sat down beside me, got so fed up with me doing all this talking that I can hear him barking. So I'll go and investigate and apprehend the little rat, wherever he is. You wait till I find him.